Hey, everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm Ellen Lewis, and I'm here with Jenny May. <laughs> Jenny is our resident sock expert, and I am so excited to share with you all of the stuff that she has to say. Um, I was thinking about this, and I was sharing it with Jenny. You know, there's common wisdom that, um, I guess it was Malcolm Gladwell who wrote The Tipping Point and a lot of other stuff said that it's 10,000 hours to become an expert at something. So I was doing the math and I thought, okay, 10,000 hours, um, 100 hours to make a pair of socks. Probably a good average, yeah. Fingering weight? Yes, fingering weight. Okay, so 10,000 divided by 100. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Jenny has definitely made more than enough socks to qualify <laughs> as an expert. And I'm so pleased to have Thank you. you. Yes, I'm Thank pleased you. you're on the team. Thank you. And I'm really glad that you could be here Love tonight. To be here. A lot of people probably tuned in just to see you. Hi, Sandy <laughs> and Jal and Gail and Polly. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, so if you're if you're watching and you have a question or a comment, go ahead and put it in the the chat section and we'll we'll answer it. Great. So so let's just start like how did you learn to knit to start? Um, well, first I was a crocheter. My mother-in-law taught me how to crochet when I was pregnant with my oldest. And, um, and I did that for a long time and I just really, uh, ended up with an extra yarn stash. So my husband bought me a knitting machine, just the manual kind oh. to use up some of the stash. And I became fascinated with how the stitches were formed. And then I really wanted to make socks. And that was hard to do on a knitting machine. So <laughs> right. I decided I would, <laughs> I would learn how to hand knit. And so I um, I started getting books from the library because I didn't know anyone who knit. So, well, and I it, didn't know you existed at the time. <laughs> you actually probably didn't exist at I the might time. not have because yeah. you started coming pretty soon after I, I opened. I did. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I would have learned to knit in about... About 2006, 2007. Okay, so I opened in 2004. Okay, right. So I found you just after. Right. But you, <laughs> yeah, I remember you coming in and mm -hmm. you were a fast knitter. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, it was so cute. I love this story. So let me tell you. <laughs> I was holding a first Friday competition. It was a knit along and I had a little prize for whoever won. And, um, this was back in the days before there was Ravelry. So it was all paper patterns. And I had not counted on this being as popular as it was. So I didn't have enough paper patterns for everybody. So I had ordered more, but they hadn't arrived. And so I gave everybody a copy of the first page. And, you know, I figured, okay, well, next week they'll be here. I'll give everybody the pattern that they ordered. And at the end of it, Jenny, sweet Jenny, she came up and she, she was real quiet and she said, do you think I could maybe have the second page? And I said, well, you know, you're going to have the whole pattern next week. And she said, well, it's just that I, I, I knit kind of fast. <laughs> like next week, she was done. <laughs> Remember that? I do. That was I do. great. Yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. That was a fun pattern. That was my first ever time participating in anything for the shop because I had just found you right before then. So. Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. so, so what was it about? making socks that got you so jazzed? Uh, a lot of things. Um, one was the portability of it. Like the fact that it's it's small, it's compact, it's easy. You know, I usually have something in the glove compartment of my car. So <laughs> if you get stuck in traffic unexpectedly or whatever, break down and you have to wait for AAA, it's nice. So it was the portability. It was the fact that you can knit, um, socks as a gift much easier than some other things. Everybody wears socks, not everybody wears sweaters. So I wanted to be able to give gifts and uh, knit, um, especially for babies. At the time, my sister-in-laws and I were all having babies. So I really wanted to be able to do some cute little baby socks because what's what's cuter than little baby socks, right? <laughs> and only the baby. Only, right, that's true. <laughs> that is true. So those were most of the reasons why socks appealed to me. And, and did you start right off with double points or? Yeah, I mean, uh, first I started with basic knitting, of course. You right, know, I right, knit right. a couple of shawls like everybody, or well, scarves, um, but not too many because once I figured out all you really needed to know how to do was knit and purl and work in the round, then I did socks. But mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I um I started with double points because I hadn't heard of any other options. And then as a as the library grew their book collection, <laughs> I found other books and found all this fascinating um, different ways that you can knit in the round. Right. So yeah, I tried all of them and came up with my favorites. All right. So so tell <laughs> tell everybody about your first pair of socks. My Were they perfect? Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So, so good to know. Nope. This. <laughs> they weren't the same size. <laughs> they were um, not done in the right kind of yarn because I hadn't learned anything about what kind of yarn you should use for socks. They were they were wonky. They had laddering up all of it because it was double points. So I had laddering on everywhere you could ladder. <laughs> yeah, they weren't pretty, but no. But you kept at it. I did, and I realized they at least had a similar shape to a sock. So I was getting somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what do you wish someone had told you at that first pair when you cast on, you know, if the fairy godmother had come and said, hi, I'm your, <laughs> I'm your sock fairy godmother. Here, here's something you need to know when you first time. Start with worsted weight. Okay. Um, start. Uh, don't be afraid to start. Don't be afraid to actually just cast on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are probably the, sh the two biggest ones is start with worsted weight because learning the concepts of the sock is so much easier when you can see the stitches so much better. So a worsted weight yarn on bigger needles, you can see what's actually happening when you're doing your gusset decreases and things like that. And when you have to pick up stitches, it's a whole lot easier on worsted weight. Light, makes light colors too. Light colors. Light colors. Right. I mean, that makes so much mm -hmm. sense because knitting with really fine yarn on really small needles is its own challenge. It is. Right? It's its own skill set. Right. Right? It's a completely different animal. Mm -hmm. Don't you guys think, don't you think that like working on really tiny yarn is something you kind of have to learn separately and kind of get used to? We have a lot of comments. I know. <laughs> I was just reading them. These... <laughs> Hi, Kaidi. Hi, yeah. Norma. Oh, you guys are so cute. I know. So I, I do think that it's it's its own skill set. It so, is. Yeah. So we often, like with the coconuts, mm -hmm. you know, you teach that on a size 11 needle. Right. So you're getting the concept. That's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. That's a brilliant thought. Yeah. Well, and it's the whole satisfaction, too. You, um, you can accomplish it a little faster. So you can see how easy the process is from start to finish. A little quicker than if you do it on on you know it's easy to lose focus on a new project when it's fine yarn and small needles and it takes so long to get to the next step by the time you finished a pair of socks if it's your, if your first pair is on fingering weight by the time you finish the pair you will totally have forgotten how to cast on <laughs> because it's so long in between so you'll even have forgotten how you did the heel because by the time you finish either the foot or the leg depending on which way you work it's just gonna, it's just gonna take so much time. Wow. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things I learned <laughs> in the process. Right. Um, so that was your first sock. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your most fabulous sock. So most of my most fabulous socks have been gifts. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, I, I did a lot of socks for my daughters and oh. my husband, but, um, some of my favorites were Hunter Hammerson's patterns. Right. She has gorgeous sock patterns. And we did a lot of those in our advanced classes. So a lot of these ladies tuned in tonight will have knit some of Hunter Hammerson's patterns and probably feel the same way. They're just gorgeous. They're works yeah. of art. But I also have these. These were one of my favorites. Let's these are my these alley socks. Look how cute <laughs> they are. She has little beads in there for the yeah. eyes. Isn't that adorable? They're subtle beads on purpose, but they're they're cool. Oh my gosh, so <laughs> cute! Again, we did this as a knit along, so a lot of people, a lot of our sock knitters locally will have already knit these as well. Those so, are fun. Yeah. So I noticed you have those on sock blockers. I do. Okay, so talk to me about sock blocking and blocking socks and so blocking and blocking. <laughs> socks. So these are these are handmade by my husband for me, by the way. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> If you don't know Jason, he can just like do anything, right? He does. He's pretty awesome. He's, he's wonderful. So anyway, um, 
I rarely block my socks. I'm going to be totally honest. I will block them for two reasons. Number one, if I'm giving them as gifts and I want them to look nice in the package, I will block them <laughs> because otherwise they can well, yeah. shrivel up and you don't see the patterning. Or um, if I want to photograph them, I will block them. I'll put them on blockers for sure. Um, these, these, I wouldn't wet block on these, obviously, because you want it to be open and air out. But typically the socks are going to block on your feet because you got to, they're, they're knit with zero to negative ease. So they're going to fit on your foot so tightly that it basically blocks itself out. So blocking socks is, you know, you have to have a good reason for me to want to block the socks. You heard it here. <laughs> the expert is spoken. The if you hate <laughs> Because your foot blocks it, right? Exactly. Your foot blocks it because it it pulls to the shape. Like you can see on he, here, these are pretty stretched. The same thing happens when you put them on your feet. They stretch over your foot, so it, it contours them, which is even a better way to block them because my foot doesn't look like this. So <laughs> no? if you block them with your actual feet, they eventually start to hold the shape of your foot a little bit. Uh, even after washing, they just kind of they have some rounded edges where you have rounded edges so it's perfect right. perfect yeah i recognize that sock yarn you do that was the oldest shibui the shibui sock right <laughs> when you first started carrying right? the shibui sock this pattern had just been printed and it was in this color and you know how it is when you see a pattern right knit in a color you want it in that color yes. <laughs> and i snagged the first two skeins you put on the shelf of this color shibui yarn i remember it <laughs> It sat for a long time. It took me a long time to actually start and finish these. But so that was pretty early in your sock knitting career. The, yeah. Well, the thought of it was. Okay. <laughs> I didn't actually cast them on for many. They th this yarn sat on my shelf for a lot of years because I knew what I wanted it to be, and I just kept putting it off. You I kept putting ready. it off. Um, part of it was I wasn't ready. Part of it was these were for me. Um, and I knit a lot of socks as gifts. So a lot of times it's hard to indulge myself in casting on for myself when I know Christmas is coming or birthdays are coming. Right. So, so what is your, like, we've talked about a couple things for beginners. What is your favorite mm -hmm. pattern for beginners? If somebody's like, I don't even know where to start. Now you said worsted. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So my absolute favorite um, to learn from I have written a simple pattern. It's it's pretty simple, but it, a worsted weight. It doesn't matter if you start with top down or co up, uh, <laughs> top down or toe up. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> they're um, they're both just as easy to learn. They're just different concepts. So it's like it's like your first sweater. It doesn't matter if you do a cardigan or a pullover. They're they're just different concepts. Um, so. A worsted weight is definitely the way to go. A plain sock is the way to go for your first sock. However, as soon as you get comfortable with some of it, beginner pattern, my favorite is Hermione's Everyday Socks. We brought this up before. It's, I'm um, going to go ahead and put this on the... Uh... the that's one of them. And um, the Nutkin pattern. So she's going to show you both of those. Okay. Yeah. They both... So Hermione's Everyday Socks. I'm going to... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to post this in the... Um, I'm going to post this in the chat. Perfect. Yeah. All right. This one's wonderful because you can use a colorful yarn and it shows off the yarn without being super complicated or hard to do. The patterning is, it's all still just knits and pearls with a little bit of decreasing. Um, this one has a, a gusset heel. Now the Nutkin pattern is another one that's one of my favorites. It looks so complicated, but it is not. Don't let it scare you. It's a very easy, nice pattern to knit. All right. So we have a question here. Okay. Do you prefer toe up or cuff down? Ooh, that's a that's a trick question. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'll answer it quickly. I prefer toe up, but tell why. It's well. Okay. First of all, it's really important to know both. Because if you find a pattern on Ravelry that you fall in love with and you're not comfortable rewriting it, you want to be able to knit it. So it's important to know both for one that one reason. Another reason is heels, and we'll probably get to that later. Certain heels are easier to do top down or toe up, and certain heels fit different foot types better. Um, Let's talk about that. That's okay. interesting. <laughs> okay. I didn't have that on my list of stuff to talk okay. about, so yay. <laughs> 
Well, there's a few. My One of my sock knitters, Lee Weaver, she has a high instep. And so she has tried every heel I've thrown at her. She is wonderful. She has tested and tried all of them and has two favorites because they fit her foot style better. She prefers either um, the traditional um, heel flap, heel flap heel because it it stretches better and it fits. And she has recently discovered the afterthought heel. And if she adds stitches to it or picks up extra stitches, that fits well also. Okay. However, for me, I have a fairly short average foot with, you know, no, no high instep or anything. And I prefer the um, fish lips kiss heel, which is like a twin stitch heel. And I think we'll throw that that yes. link up later too. Yeah, I'll do that right now, actually. Sure. Um, so go ahead and talk about your favorite construction method. You okay. know, toe up. Right. So these are these are knit toe up, you can see. And um, the reason I like toe up is because number one, you can get socks out of a you can get one pair of socks out of a typical skein of fingering weight sock yarn. Um, the average one. Now, some some are different, obviously. And I like to knit from the toe up because when I buy these fun yarns, I like to be able to just keep knitting till I run out of yarn. So I don't waste any of the yarn. So I can make them as tall or as short as the yarn will allow. You don't have like little bits of this and that lying around. Exactly. Yeah. Just enough to mend if I have to later. Mm -hmm. So do you mm -hmm. keep some to mend? If you I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Or I keep, I try to keep some. Yes. Okay. Do you do you darn your heels and stuff? I do. I do. Really? Yes. Yes. And do you do that like um, like a grafting kind of darning, or do you do it just like it a depends cross? on how the it depends on how the hole forms. Okay. I'm just honestly, the socks I've knit for my family, um, other than one pair that was destroyed by my daughter's dog, that was. <laughs> That uh, doesn't count. Wasn't repairable. I couldn't <laughs> fix those. But um, like my husband's socks just started wearing out over the last year. The socks I've been knitting him for all these years, oh they they have lasted so well. It has stunned me how long some of these socks have lasted. So I so ten years. I just took up darning <laughs> like a year or two ago because out of necessity. Yeah, some of them have lasted probably a good ten years. So how many pair of socks does your husband have that you have knit for him? Oh, probably, probably six or seven. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Does he wear those like all every day to work? No, he doesn't wear them with his work boots oh, because mm -hmm. the work boots will ruin the socks. Oh. <laughs> but he wears them to church all the time, and he wears them when we go out all the time in the winter more than the summer mm -hmm. because in the summer he wears the short socks, and mm -hmm. I don't knit those for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no, no shorties no. for Jason. <laughs> They're not as questions. much fun. <laughs> all right. So, um, so what are the what are the ins and outs of toe up versus tuck cuff down from from a be beginner perspective? I mean, you said mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you go which way. So the the beginner you, when you teach, mm -hmm. we typically teach the first class cuff down. The Is that just because I said that was no, what I no, thought? No. <laughs> no, the reason we typically teach cuff down first is because when you go look on Ravelry or any other knitting sock book, most of the patterns are written top down because that's the most traditional method. So teaching you that skill first opens far more doors than if I teach you toe up first. So right. that's the reasoning behind that. It's not that that's easier. Honestly, the, the cast on's probably easier for the toe up mm -hmm. to learn, mm -hmm. but it's... um. But they're both completely learnable. They're not, mm -hmm. they're totally doable. So I just chose that one first to give you a, a bigger window of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really smart, you know, because it's like you want a lot of options. Right, right. right? That's, that's half the fun. And there's so many more um, beginner type patterns that are top down mm -hmm. rather than toe up. Mm -hmm. So, um, So let's see. Let's talk about the knitting in the round. Mm -hmm. Okay. Double pointed needles. I mean, back in the day, that's pretty much all there was, right? right? And you've all knit on double pointed needles or whatever. Right. So, but that's not, that's not your way. It's not my favorite. Okay. No. <laughs> tell us about your process of going 
double points to what? And and what made you say, oh my gosh, this has just got to stop? So <laughs> originally I stopped doing double points because I found Magic Loop and I wanted to knit two at a time. Second sock syndrome is a real thing. It's really hard to knit the exact same project twice. Well, you said also that your second sock was a different size. It was. <laughs> It was because if you knit them one at a time, you have to measure carefully. You have to count carefully. You have when you knit them two at a time. I could just keep knitting until it looks about the right length, and then I can measure. Um, so I don't have to count. I don't have to count rows. It's phenomenal. <laughs> and after a while, you knit socks so often you can kind of even use your hand to measure. Like you know, it's got to be about this long, and then I got to start the heel. So that's a that's a big perk to knitting mm -hmm. two at a time. Honestly, I I. I wouldn't want to knit one at a time again. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Most sock knitters would probably agree with me. Now, Norma knits um, two at a time on two different sets of needles. Right. A lot of people do for the same reason, because you're still working them the same. So you don't right. have to. And when you're done, you're done. Right. It's nice to not have to start all over and knit the exact same sock. That is sort of demoralizing, mm -hmm. isn't it? it? It's just... It's not fun. We love, how many times have you have you cast on and you find a next project and you already have either several projects started or several projects ready to go because you know you just want to knit this one next. And so when you finish one and you have to knit the second one before you can start that other fun project, it's just, it's just no fun. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, so you went from double points to Magic Loop. Yes, to Magic Loop because it was the only book I found. At the time, I hadn't even heard of two circulars. Okay. Um, didn't even think about the possibility of that. So I did the magic loop and it worked and it was fine, but it got fiddly. Like um, if your needle wasn't super, super, super long, then sometimes your stitches would combine and then you'd lose track of where your edging was and your heel would be in the wrong place. So there were a lot of reasons I hesitated to continue with magic loop. And then I found the socks two at a time auntie gillingham her book it's out of print now which is so sad you can probably get um, it secondhand on you know I, Amazon. it's limited and oh, it's really? it's pricey yeah it's hard i that's my favorite that's my favorite book that's how i learned to do this and um i fell in love immediately and haven't turned back now i'm not gonna lie i have done magic loop once or twice when i was on vacation and all i had was one needle and decided i had to cast on a pair then and there <laughs> 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 so it's nice to have that skill set just in case. Um, one other time I had to do it because my needle actually broke. I was using um, a, a different needle join and it, it just broke. Oh so, my goodness. yeah, so I was stuck with one needle again on vacation. Had to wait till I got home to get a new one. So <laughs> you were in the middle of nowhere. There were no yarn stores. I, it, probably not. Like I didn't I didn't look at the time because we were on the beach. So, you oh. know, Yeah. <laughs> But this is my favorite needles, too. I know. Okay, we, let's talk about let's the talk needles. needles. All right. <laughs> okay, so you see my pretty red cables here. Show them up close. Oh, so these are my chow goose. These, this pair happens to be a fixed set. However, well, I own several chow goose fixed sets because I didn't know about their sock sets when I first started well, knitting. They didn't them. have them. They didn't. They probably didn't. No, those are new, relatively new. Here they are. They were hiding. Yes. So I own two sets because I do two at a time on two circulars. So I have to have the same sizes. So the Chow Goo sock sets are my favorite. You can see there's several missing because I have socks on them at home. <laughs> but you have more than one socks pair going? No. Never. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Because you have to have your simple socks, the ones that are just plain knitting that you can just pick up at any time mm -hmm. while you're watching TV or a scary movie or anything. And then I have always have at least these and at least a, a complicated pair because I have to be challenging myself or I'll get bored. So I have, you know, cable socks at home and I have lace socks and I have all kinds of fun things. But these sets are amazing. They come with lots of extra cables and they're I didn't ask cute little pouch. This. No, not this is, <laughs> anyone, anyone who knits socks with me knows Chow Goos are my favorite. It is, as I say, it's very hard to argue with that cord. It is. It is. Right. It's, I mean, and they are, as far as I know, the only company that does them at this size. I mean, right. quad zero. Oh, yeah. Right. That's really small. So, you know, if you've ever wrestled with a circular needle, you know that sometimes the cords have a mind of their own. And this is why I love Chow Goo, because it doesn't curl back up on itself. I don't know if you can see it. It just lays. It hangs. 
So it's, if you're already fighting with two circulars and two, pro two projects, two balls of yarn, you don't want to fight with the needle too. So that's why they're my absolute favorite. And the points are perfect. Yes, they're, they're not, very pointy. They're very pointy, but they're not so pointy they're going to hurt you. <laughs> like some <laughs> well, of them. They, they might. <laughs> <laughs> they could if you tried, right? I'm sure. <laughs> so we have a question here. Okay. Um, would you consider hosting a virtual class? Okay, Patty, you're my Ooh. girl because I've been on Jenny for this for forever. <laughs> it, um, I'm going to have Brandy come in and video just for virtual. I could do. Um, it wouldn't. I, it would be a recorded class, right? I could try. Uh, anyone who's taken one of my classes knows I'm a very hands-on teacher, which is why I didn't teach any over COVID either, because I'm. I tend to get a little close, <laughs> because I have to see you and help you from your perspective sometimes. So, the only problem with a virtual class, and this is part of the reason it's so so good to take a real class, is. While you can see what I'm doing, I can't see what you're doing. So if you make a mistake, I can't catch it then and there. And one other thing that anyone who's taken a SOC class will let you know is in the classes, it's really awesome to be able to learn from other people's mistakes. Like you don't have to make all the mistakes yourself. <laughs> Somebody's already made them, right? And, right. And, well, and it happens in class a lot of times. So I can take that and help fix it and show you what happens so that we can avoid it in the future and like you know person a might make this mistake and person c is going to make a totally different mistake and they're both great teachable moments that you might miss out on in a virtual class so it's not that i'm opposed to teaching virtually it's that i feel like you don't get as much totally true yeah you don't get as much right but if somebody doesn't have that right we'll talk about this later right i'm i'm on it patty <laughs> I'm on it. I'm with you. <laughs> we'll get there. Okay, so we talked about needles. Let's talk about yarn. In last week's newsletter, I did a whole big thing on sock yarn. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely see that if you go to the to the website. It's a blog post. But let's talk about what you look for and what you really like from a structural and functional perspective as well as from a like design and color perspective. Well, um, from a structural perspective, and I what look, should knitters know? I like uh, beginners, right? I look for the ply. You need, uh, honestly, a good four ply is probably the best. If it's too few, if it's a one ply or a two ply, number one, it won't hold up as well. But number two, it also feels bad if you're walking. We just talked about this on Monday night. It's right. so funny. If your socks are knit in a one or two ply yarn, a lot of times when you're walking on them, you'll start to feel those stitches a little bit, like the the the. The four and six ply, they hold up better. The well, four. part of it is too, is that mm -hmm. the more ply, the rounder the yarn. Exactly. And when you have a one or a two ply, it's especially a two ply, it's not as round. Right. So that's yeah. what that's what you're So you tend for. to feel I, it a little bit. I um, hadn't thought about that. Yeah. It, it makes a big difference. I only know this from experience. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's a big one. Um, content is another big one because I want socks to last. I mean, my husband's, you know, I want 10 year socks <laughs> because they take a long time to knit and a lot of effort goes into these sometimes. Um, and as much as you enjoy the process, you still want it to last a long time. So I like my favorite is a merino nylon blend. Um, 75 25 is great, 80 20 is great. Those are my two favorites. Now, if there's a little bit of silk or a little bit of cashmere, that's fine, but it it changes the way you have to handle them when you wash them. You have to be really careful with those. those. So do you think silk is as strong as far as a structural component mm -hmm. as nylon? It is. Okay. It is definitely strong. I find that nylon has more bounce back. Yes. And so that's why it's better for socks. Because um, uh, one of my first pair of socks, I knit with a cotton yarn. Oh. <laughs> Oh, sweetie. <laughs> yes, I know. I was learning. And you obviously, you know, the first time you wear that, they stretch and they never go back. <laughs> so it ended up being bigger than my Christmas stocking eventually. But this... Uh, you can put some goodies in there. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why content is so important, though, because you want it to have that elasticity that you need to, to be able to stretch to fit your foot comfortably because you don't want it to be so tight that you can't get your foot in there, especially your heel. That's the hard part. You got to make sure it fits. And then you also want it to go back. So if you wear them all day, when you take them off at night and you wash them later, you want to make sure that it's going to go back to fit your foot again and not be 
you know, something you have to pass along to your husband because they don't fit you anymore. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> right. not good. Right. <laughs> Especially if they're like hot pink. Right, exactly. You might not want them. <laughs> no, no. Is Jason fussy about the colors that he wears? No, no. I mean, he wears a lot more colors than I ever expected he would in socks. Okay. I, if I knit him pink socks, he'd probably only wear them in October. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's cute. okay. That's yeah. understandable. <laughs> so let's talk about color of sock yarn and patterning and how that. Oh, the funner the better. See, that's the great thing about socks. You're not going to wear it next to your face. So you don't have to worry about how good it's going to look with your skin tone, with your hair color, even with your outfit. Half the time, people can't see them. I'm wearing hand at socks right now, but I have boots up to my knees. So nobody will ever see my socks right now, but I know they're there. And it's like so, great underwear. Exactly. <laughs> so we, we go for fun, wild colors all the time in this class, uh, in, this, in this shop, honestly. All of my sock knitters will know we've knit some some of the brightest yellow socks you'll ever see. We've knit some pumpkin orange socks and those are not colors I would ever typically wear, <laughs> but it, that's the and funnest face, part right. in my face. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll wear them on my feet all day long though. It's fun. You, you can go out and buy novelty socks all day. You know, my son has socks with tacos and hamburgers. And right. So that's <laughs> quite the thing. And the is, mismatched is, is the thing. It, I don't know that that is anymore. No. I think that's more out of necessity because oh. when he does his laundry, he doesn't want to match them up. But. All right. That's probably a trend that's passed. Exactly. There's your aunt dated. I obviously, I my, my 20 year old is across the country. Right. So I don't know that's what's true. anymore. But what about, okay, so that's for like plain socks, mm -hmm. but like with, with sweaters, right? we typically don't prefer highly variegated yarns right. when there's a lot of stitch pattern. And it's the same with socks. If you're going to knit cabled socks, like these, these owl socks, um, some people have done them in a, um, like a dotted yarn, a, a spotted yarn, and they've, they've held up pretty nicely depending on the, the, how busy the yarn is. You don't really want a really busy yarn if you're going to try showing off a cable or a lace pattern. It just, it will hide it and all of your work will be for nothing. So definitely That's a solid. This that was is a, a solid. That was a machine mm -hmm. dyed. A semi-solid would typically work too. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, as long as it's a really low contrast, like they, it would work for things like this pretty mm -hmm. well. So yeah. And um, striping, striping tends to, it depends on the pattern because striping can either show off the pattern or hide it. It just depends on how heavily intricate your pattern is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's pros and cons to both. So you probably don't know because Jenny's too modest to tell you, but <laughs> she um, actually designed a bunch of sock patterns. She told you that about the sock pattern that she designed for the beginner socks. Mm -hmm. But when we did our sock club a couple years ago, she also designed all four custom socks <laughs> for, we did this fabulous bounty of Southern Maryland. She did, did a pair for oysters and stuffed ham, stuffed ham, and crabs. And crabs. <laughs> What else? Oh, grapes. grapes. The wine. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were all so fabulous. And we've been threatening to put that back out there to make the patterns available. Mm -hmm. So look for that. I think we probably will put that out there. And I'm, I'm even thinking about re-releasing the, um, the custom hand-dyed yarn that went with that. So that would be really fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I had fun working on that project. And another one, you know, maybe coming up. Maybe. Some special uh, patterns and yeah. If only we had a test knitter that knit really fast, like uh, Heidi. Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's all the time that I told Jenny that I would take from her because she's <laughs> such a busy girl. But words of wisdom. What are the words of wisdom that you would give to a beginning sock knitter? Be brave. It's just yarn. At the end of the day, it's just yarn. And you can have so much fun if you branch out into this. That's it. Yay! <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. If you enjoyed this, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you could make your way into the shop, we'd love to have you. Otherwise, we're av um, available 24-7 at crazyforyou.com. Yep. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> Kylie's ready. She's so cute. She is. Her. Oh, I love it. <laughs>